Oh, it's a bit. It's a crackle. Sounds a crackle? Yeah. Ooh. I want that. You want more crackle? There's yeah. a more? Here you go. That's good. Oh. Good man, that's something. Look at the camera. Cheese. Cheese, look at the camera. Look at the camera. Cheese. Mmm. You want more? Yeah. Wow. Bring some more pork over. More Crispy pork belly. Um, where do I start with this? This is absolutely one of my favourite things to eat. Now, there are different leagues of pork crackle, and I'm an absolute crackle snob. Now, I personally like the, the, the pork crackle that you get with the tiny little bubbles, you know. Um, it's not a hard texture. It's not definitely not chewy or tough. It's, it's really quite light, almost like you'd be chewing pork crackle or crackling uh, or cracklings or, or chicharron. Out of, out of a bag, like it's super duper crispy, but it's not dry, it's moist, you get that fat underneath, and it's just I, I, one of my absolute favorite things to eat. Now, the secret, absolute secrets to pork belly is just two things, uh, high heat and dry skin. Now, if you only had two, those two things, you'd nail it almost every time. And so over the course of the years, you, may, you guys may have seen my video that had a million views that I totally just jagged and had no idea I had a million views on until someone mentioned it years down the track. And so how I got into this was basically people kept on asking me for my pork belly recipe. And so I got sick of writing it out and telling them. So I actually did up a YouTube video and you'll actually see me in my pajamas. <laughs> and, and it wasn't just made from my friends, but, but like big thing is guys, I'm gonna help you guys nail this recipe. Whatever I have to do, you, if you've got any problems, just leave a comment and I'll be able to help you nail it. But I've, I've basically simplified this recipe, removed a lot of unnecessary things that I've found that you just don't need in, in, in the course of making excellent, or if not perfect, pork belly. So I removed the boiling water. I no longer salt and vinegar overnight. I definitely do not score. You do not need any of those things to have the best absolute ever pot belly and I'm going to teach you guys how to perfect it and help you to nail it too. So please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that button and I'll help you guys uh, um, uh, achieve your goals with and kick, kick, kick all those barbecue and pot belly goals that you want to achieve. Um, but yeah, thanks guys. Thanks for watching and onto the video. Okay guys. So we let that dry overnight. You can see, it's really hard, it might be hard to see, but you can see it's changed color a little bit. It's actually quite hard. You don't want it too hard now. I probably could have done it just yesterday without having dry it overnight because it was already dry enough. But that should come up nice and good. So what we're gonna do now, season it. So what I do, this is my shoe yuk. Sorry, my first ever video I pronounced it wrong, so it's shoe yuk. Get, I get a bit of sesame oil. You don't have to do the oil bit. I like it. Okay. Here's, I'll take, take this glove off for the moment. And then what I do is I'm gonna get, uh, here we go. So rub that, rub this in a bit. Should have possibly left the glove on, doesn't matter. Okay, and then what I want to do is salt. Uh, where did it go? All right, guys, two secs. A bit of black pepper. Quite often I'll put cracked black pepper on there. You can put Sichuan pepper as well. Uh, chili if you want, MSG if you really want. I find it doesn't need it, but uh, I'm not shy of a bit of MSG from time to time as well if you want to give it that extra bit of oomph. Okay, then I'm gonna do is uh, some Chinese five spice powder. Oh, can't get that cap out, hang on. Sorry guys, it just, Alarm went off and it cut my video. Bloody amateur hour, here we go.
And then a bit of fire spice, don't go too hard. This can be quite strong. And then you don't have to do this, I go some garlic powder. Okay. And then you just wanna, just wanna pat that in. And then we're gonna stick that into the air fryer shortly. Okay guys, let's stick it in. So top shelf, skin side down, okay, for 10 minutes. On about 180 degrees, which is about 350 Fahrenheit. Now I personally, okay, 10 minutes. I personally prefer these uh, uh, shelf style uh, air fryers as opposed to uh, the drawer style. I used to have an old uh, UFO style, you know, the glass ones. Uh, they're called Flavor Waves or Turbo Ovens back then. Back then, uh, they used to have an, an advert with Mr. T. Pin it the fool without a flavor wave. So uh, that was my thing back in the day. I, I reckon I uh, about 20 years ago we had one of those, and I was yeah teaching people how to do pork belly all the way back then. Now my methods changed to simplify things a lot over the time, but you'll see how easy this and we'll, this is, and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Okay, guys, we're back. Three, two, one. Kaboomski, here we go. So what we're gonna do now, now I forgot to say why I actually did that section. It's basically because if has anyone had pork belly and it starts to curl up, um, this will prevent that from happening so you can get a nice even crackle. So what I'll do now is flip this over. Okay, now what I generally do, okay, so flip that over. Now, there's a bit of oil here. Just gonna push that over the top. It's quite hot. Just to help the, the salt stick a bit. And I'm gonna salt that now. Again, top shelf. Now this time, as high as you can go uh, with your as high as you can go, sorry, 20 minutes, as high as you can go on your um, air fryer. Now, some of them will go to 250. If you can do it to 250, obviously, you just want to check that every now and again to make sure it's not burning. What you want to do as well is sometimes you might notice that fat's pooling on there, and we'll see if it does it with this one. If the fat's pooling, all you do is you prop it up on an angle like that, and I'll put a cutting board or something like underneath it, so all the fat runs off. Cool, so we'll come back in a short while and uh, have some progress shots of it crackling up. Guys, it's a bit hard to see because it's steaming up. I'm not sure if you can see it in there, but you can see, oh, there we go. There's a little window in there. You can see she's starting, she's only been two, three minutes and she's starting to bubble up already. That's when you know you've got to go and bang on. After about 12, 13 minutes, oh my goodness, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna close this up now. Oh my God, you should smell that. That smells so good. All right, let's get going. Okay guys, coming up to 20 minutes. Three, two, Ignition. Here we go. Now, yeah. there ain't nothing wrong with that. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's crackled from head to toe. Well, not head to toe, but side to side. Alrighty guys, and so what we're gonna do now, lower it down to a, a lower shelf, and we're gonna cook that for another about an hour on about between 160 and 180 Celsius, so about between 325 Fahrenheit and 350 Fahrenheit for around an hour. And then we're gonna check for tenderness after that. So essentially it's done, you could eat that now. If you wanna go a little bit harder, you can go a little bit harder and 
try to get um, it to crackle and pop that little bit more, but that's just right for me. Okay, we'll stick her in. I'm gonna take a few photos. There might be a bit of a delay, but uh, uh, we'll move on to the next step. And we'll come back in about an hour's time. Oh my God, look at that. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. Extreme close up. No boiling water, no scoring, no vinegar, no salt overnight. Just get that skin dry, give it some high heat. Let that baby rip. All right, we'll come back in an hour's time. All righty, guys, here we are. So that was 20, 20 minutes in to set the crackle. And then about another hour. You're going to have to work it out. Sometimes 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes longer, depending on the size of the pork belly. Now, you can use fang dangled device like this which measures measures uh, temps but in all honesty all i do is i'll just a sardé skewer see how easy that goes in you don't want to jab it as many times like it's a blow-up doll <laughs> it just once should be fine and you want it to basically just slide in and out like a hot knife does butter and that lets you know that it's tender so yeah you can go by temps so if i'm going by temps i'm using about 200 200 Fahrenheit to 205 Fahrenheit. I'll do the conversion for you Celsius folk. But um, I find that uh, if you want it just done, you know, after about half an hour, she's just done. If you want it that just before melting your mouth, sorry, just to pour before falling apart texture. So it's still relatively easy to slice, but it all does all the melting in your mouth. Then you can uh, take that to about 200 to 205 Fahrenheit, but just remember to use that probe because sometimes it'll be done earlier than that. If you push it too far, then it starts to get mushy and be hard to cut. Okay, now I'm going to take this to my mum's house now, and uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna eat this for dinner. Oh my goodness! Look at that crackle. You should smell that. Look at the tiny little bubbles all over and these little black bits you can just scrape off look at that have a look at how raised the, bu the big bubbles are that's going to be so crispy and crunchy oh my goodness yeah. oh listen to that You can actually see that the muscles are broken down and it's about to like, fall apart and melt in your mouth. Gorgeous. Right, guys, here we go. Mmm. Oh. Melt in your mouth. Juicy pork. Now for the real test. Oh, that's so good. See how I've left the, the teeth marks in there? Like basically the bite mark, not the teeth marks. Oh, that's magic. You should be able to leave it like that. It should be uh, crisp enough and fine enough that you can cut it into perfectly straight slices and then just like you would a pork rib, be able to leave a bite mark in there. Mmm, it's light, it's fluffy, and really full of flavour. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, and please let us know if there's any other things you'd like me to shoot a video of. Really appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you.